Welcome back. Previously I... on Smarter Circuits. What is that? We last left our intrepid host standing toe to toe with the giant Marvel Armada. I don't need another narrator. I am the narrator. Is this the end for our host? No, why would Will it... he be able to match wit with a mighty mini? Yeah, probably. Or will he have to hang his head in shame and start purchasing that which is trendy? Oh I already monologued this in the last video. Does he have what it takes? Don't do it. To build a better voice assistant. I mean it, that's my bit. With smarter circuits? Don't do it, that's... Welcome to Smarter Circuits. I'm your host, Ian Klein. And I'm Better Narrator Guy. Better Narr... Anyway, this is the Google Home Mini I took apart in the last video. <laughs> we showed that already. It has a mean processor, an absolute behemoth. And as I said in the previous video, as I said in the previous video, I cannot without spending hundreds of dollars begin to match Our it. hero admits defeat. Hold on, I'm not admitting but while this device might seem like it's impossible to replicate, we need to look at it for what it a is. A voice assistant with a lot of neat little lights. A voice assistant with a lot of neat little lights. Blinkity blinkity blue. This is a Raspberry Pi 3B. <laughs> I think they know that. And this is a USB microphone. Obviously. Will you let me do the thing? Sorry. You'll get your turn. This is a USB microphone. You can probably guess what I'm going to do with it. What about the lights? I'm getting to the lights. I'm getting to the lights. Give me a minute. These are WS2812B programmable RGB LEDs. I thought, why have four lights when you could have 64 lights? Yeah, why not? But I ran into a problem. Little did our hero know. Will you cut that out? Well, I ran into a few problems, but they were all self-inflicted. The first time I connected the LEDs to the Raspberry Pi, I connected the hot wire to the GPIO instead of the data wire, and it fried the Pi. Fried the Pi. That's pretty good. Thanks. Moving on. So after grabbing a replacement Pi from my old emulator box, I got everything hooked up correctly, re-imaged an SD card, and got everything up and running again, only to discover something I knew a long time ago but had forgotten. One of the reasons I prefer the WS2801 to the WS2812B programmable LEDs is that you need to use the PWM driver to control the WS2812, and that's also what the Raspberry Pi uses to produce sound. So when I tried to control the lights, my speakers went all 1993 on me. You've got fail! So here I am back at square one. I could abandon the LEDs, they're not that useful on the Mini really, but I won't give up that easy. <clears throat> I won't give up that easy. Right. In tireless pursuit of independence from third-party services. I'm going to enlist the help of this Raspberry Pi Pico to serve as the LED controller. I'll connect it to the 3B with UART so I can send data to be displayed using a direct connection. Clever. Thanks. So, having already downloaded the image for PyCroft from Mycroft AI's website, link below, I imaged another SD card and started wiring everything together. Full diagrams and written instructions for this build will be available to patrons and supporters, so consider helping me keep the lights on and becoming a patron. And don't forget to smash those like and subscribe buttons. Yeah, that too. The LED array hot connects to the 5 volt bus, the ground to a ground pin, and the data wire to GPIO pin 7. I'm going to run a jumper between ground pins on the two Pi's as well as the 5 volt bus so I can power everything from the same power supply. The power supply for this will need to be at least 10 amps, which is beefy but necessary if you want the LEDs at full brightness, which I do. And trust me, they are very bright. Very bright hey. voice assistant! I'll also run the UART transmit from GPIO pin 14 on the 3B to the UART receive on the Pico on GPIO pin 1. I'll run the UART receive from GPIO pin 15 on the 3B to the UART transmit on the Pico on GPIO pin 0. So now that I have all this wired up, all that remains is software. As I mentioned, I'll include the link to download the PyCroft image in the description. Using the Raspberry Pi imager software, I load the image onto an SD card with networking and SSH enabled so I can just remote into the machine. 
Once I power on the device and log into the secure shell, I'll choose the guided setup. I'm using the 3mm audio jack. I'm going to set the volume level to 9 and just adjust it on the speakers. And I'm going to choose the other USB microphone. I'll do the test. Choose yes because I heard myself. And I'm going to let this update because I'll be choosing when it has access to the internet, but I'll get to that later. I like requiring a password for sudo actions as a matter of security. I already set the password when I imaged the SD card, so I'll tell it to stick with the default, which isn't Mycroft, but it doesn't know that. Now it'll launch into the Cli client, and we'll need to activate this device on the Mycroft AI website using the provided code. Don't worry, this is a one-time thing and the voice assistant will work offline, which is what I plan to do with it. I will likely bring it online monthly to receive updates. I need to reinstall Git Python because it's out of date, but I will use Mycroft's pip tool so it doesn't disturb any necessary libraries. Then I'm going to go ahead and install the Paho MQTT library that our script will use later to send commands to the system. Now I can create a skill that Mycroft will use to send messages. I use Mycroft MSK create, then give the skill a name. It will want some triggers and I can put action in curly brackets to denote the section of speech I want to capture for my script later. It will pick a random response from a list you provide, but I'm going to just pass action back because I can modify what returns in the script later. It will want a description for the market, but I'm not really going to do that, so I'll keep everything short. I'll give it a category because it wants it, and I'll skip the subcategory. It'll want tags. These aren't needed, but what the heck. Now choose a license. I'll go with the most relaxed for giggles. Now I can modify the script for the skill and put in the necessary Python code to send messages via MQTT when it receives the appropriate command and control the Pico. I'll put this code on the GitHub repo, but basically it just listens to commands and sends the action section to the broker. I have other scripts on other machines that take care of the rest, and maybe I'll cover those in another video. I will load this script onto the Pico. Again, I'll post it on the GitHub in the description, and now I can control the LEDs and make them do interesting things. It is 547. Please turn off the shop light. And hit send. Please turn on the shop light. And hit send. There it is, a voice assistant with neat little lights. And this one works with or without internet, and I think that's worth the extra effort and slightly less interesting voice. You can actually use a multitude of text-to-speech engines with Mycroft AI, including Google's if you want, but I like this plain version for its simplicity and security. I'll be building a neat little case for this one and giving it a permanent home in the game room, and I'll make plans and details for that available to patrons. Our hero emerges victorious! I wondered if you were still there. Oh, I'm still here! Now, close the video! Right. I hope you enjoyed the video, and of course if you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue building Smarter Circuits.